I'd like to tell you about the strangest secret in the world. You go inside the cage. Cage goes in the water. You go in the water. Sharks in the water. Our shark. Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you, ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. So never more shall we see you again. <laughs> Shortly to see you again. and will You're listening to A Mind Revolution, leading you out of the rabbit hole, one grain of truth at a time. Hey there, everybody, it is P.T. Pop, with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And welcome back to P.T. Pop, A Mind Revolution, where I attempt to lead you out of the rabbit hole, one grain of truth at a time. And thank you for downloading me. I hope I don't give you indigestion. If anything, this channel was meant to get you all to learn how to think. I'm assuming, of course, that some of you do not know how to think on your own. That's no slight against you. It's it's a slight against our society. They've trained us to not know how to think. They want us dependent upon them. So we'll turn to them and go, well, what should I do here? How should I think here? What should I think here? But for me, today is Tuesday, July 27th, and and here in Ohio, it is approximately 5.37 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time. And today's program and today's show is called How to Be Happy. Before I proceed with tonight's topic of how to be happy or how to make your life happier, I wanted to talk about the film I just released. It's called The Artist, a documentary. This is a documentary I wrote and directed. I edited it. I wrote all the music for it. And this is a film that talks about the struggles of fine artists that work around the country and the world. And I wanted to make this film because I'm an artist. And I've worked in the arts in some way, shape, or form since I was 18, and I'm now 55. So I've been involved in the arts as a painter, a writer, as a photographer, as a musician, a songwriter, and a variety of things. And it's it's very, very interesting to watch society and how they downplay the role of the artist in our society. They make it seem that being an artist is just some frivolous, fun thing to do, like we're all running around in fields of tall, you know, daisies chasing butterflies, having fun smoking dope and talking about peace and love. Well, that's not the truth. Being an artist is a very, 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 very hard, I'd say career choice if you wanted to make a career. It's a very, very hard way to make a living. But this film addresses the struggle of the artists. And then the movie is called The Artist, a documentary. It's now for sale and for rent on my website, theartistadocumentary.com www.theartistdocumentary.com or it's on Vimeo. And I'll place links for both in the description of this podcast. But let me play you um, a little promotional video I created for this. So this is the audio to a trailer I created for the documentary. And the documentary is called The Artist, a Documentary. This is a promotional trailer that I edited and directed. And the music was written and composed by a wonderful musician named Norman Ali out of Florida. And um, it's just a one-minute trailer. I wanted to play the audio for it for you guys here so you can hear what the film is about. And I'll put a link to it here in in the description of this podcast. (laughs) 
When I was a kid, I had this notion that by day, artists were secluded in large drafty warehouse studios, hidden deep in the bowels of some metropolitan area. Basking in the glow of natural light pouring in from a wall of floor-to-ceiling industrial factory windows, they'd paint amazing portraits. By night, they'd attend wild parties filled with poets, dreamers, and sophists. Smoking brown cigarettes, donning black berets and tight black turtleneck sweaters. They dance, sing, and contemplate a world filled with peace and love until the wee wee hours of the morning. But was that really how artists were living their lives? So there you have that is a little promo promotional trailer I created for my film. The Artist a Documentary. Please check it out. It's a really, really, I'm really proud of this film. It's a great production. I think it's the greatest thing I've ever created as an artist. And it'll give you a really good idea how hard it is to become an artist and how hard it is to make a living. But it's never too late to become an artist. It's never too late to, to, if you've always dreamed of becoming an artist, but you've always put it off because you were afraid what your family would think or dad wants you to get, quote, a real job, unquote. It's never too late to tell dad to shut the hell up and go become an artist. <clears throat> so that being said, check it out. The Artist, a documentary.com. www.theartistadocumentary.com. And um, I was thinking about this one day. Is I uh, had reached an agreement with my wife that we would no longer watch the news. And I haven't published an episode in a while, but several months ago, both my wife and I, well, not both my wife and I, that's redundant. My wife and I agreed to stop watching the local and the national news M years ago, like a year, like four, five, six years ago, whenever Trump started his campaign, President Trump started his campaign to become president, I completely stopped watching national news so i stopped watching fox cnn abc you know cbs all those people and within this last four months my wife and i have stopped watching the local news and i had noticed an increase in my well-being my 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 personal well-being had improved dramatically when i stopped watching the national news and my well-being has since in improved because we stopped watching local news. And a lot of people, my, my in-laws and people, so why did you stop watching the news? You know, well, how do you why do you find out what's going on in the world? And I said, I don't know. I, I don't care. And I, I started thinking about it, and I thought one of the reasons I stopped watching the national news is when Trump was running for president. I couldn't get over how horribly they were covering his campaigning and how they were lying and how they were so slanted against him and how everything and everybody in the media took over this huge campaign to slander him and make him look bad. Whether what they said or not is true, I'm not here to debate that. I'm not fond of President Trump. I'm glad I don't have to hear his voice all the time on the radio now. But aside from that... I'm talking about how everybody was out to get him. And when I say the media, I'm talking about news media, magazines, newspapers, the talk show hosts, the comedians, like all the late night talk show hosts. I stopped watching all them when Trump was campaigning. I stopped watching him when he was president because everybody's monologue, whether it was Fallon or if it was um, the goofy guy with the red hair or any of them or the fat British guy. And they, that's all they talked about was President Trump, President Trump, President Trump, President Trump. And I couldn't watch it anymore. It was all obvious that there's a corporation, there, there's a factor, there's, a, there's somebody behind the scenes that controls everything that we see and hear. And they, they control the narrative. So I stopped watching all of it. Because when I watched the talk show hosts, when I watched the late night shows with Jimmy Fallon and... Um, all those guys, I would get so angry because I knew it was a lie. I knew they were just making stuff up to try to get him out of the political realm. And they were manip manipulating all of you and those of you who listen to me from this country. And it would just infuriate. And I'd sit there. My blood pressure would just like shoot through the roof until one day I said, you know what? I, I this, this is ridiculous. I can't watch this anymore. I cannot watch this anymore. 
So I stopped watching late night television. I stopped watching all the news, the national news media, CNN, Fox, all those people. I even stopped lo- listening to local talk radio. And there was a reason for that as well, because here in Cleveland, there was a local talk show host that you've all heard of, at least here in this. Well, I'm sure he's an he's a Nash, internationally known name, but in the, in the United States, Geraldo Rivera is a very big name. And Geraldo has a show here in Cleveland from it's either from eight to nine in the morning. I think it's from actually from nine to ten in the morning. And at ten, it used to be Rush Limbaugh took over until he passed away. And I don't I don't know who's who's on there now because they don't listen anymore. But Geraldo would get on, and he was allegedly friends with Trump, and he that's how he started his show a couple of years ago here in Cleveland. Because Geraldo Rivera and his wife moved to Cleveland, they moved to a suburb of Cleveland called Shaker Heights, where at one time, a long time ago, it was predominantly white Jewish community with lots of money. Uh, lots and lots of my old money lived in the area at one time and dogs did too my dogs are barking now in my illustrious studio here in Ohio um, but he lives there now with his wife and he would get on the show and talk bash Trump and he would he, he had taken he jumped on the bandwagon of let's bash Trump let's bash Trump let's bash Trump and then he got this ingenious idea to have his wife come on too who is not a personality who is not a radio personality she is a whiny little tiny voiced woman who just would sit there and yeah, yeah, yeah. she sounded like a little like hysterical mouse it was awful and, but but the whole station, this whole station here in Cleveland called WTAM, um, 1100 on the AM dial, was anti-Trump. Except for one guy named Mike Trevisano. And uh, Mike Mike has a more of a right-wing slant to things. And But Geraldo was all left-wing, severe left-wing, and I couldn't stand listening to him. So I turned off all radio. So now... I don't watch anything with the media. I turn. I don't even watch the weather. I can look out the window and see the weather. And I've never been one that's been affected by the weather. I've never been someone that went, "Oh, it's raining outside. We got to. We we can't have the cookout now." Well, sure we can. We just put the put the grill in the garage, open the door up, and cook the hamburgers inside, and we'll all eat inside. You know, while everybody else is running for their cars and stuff like that. So I've never been one affected by the weather. But I, I wanted to talk about how this affected me because I believe I can lead you to more happiness by convincing you to turn off your TVs. At the very least, stop watching the news because the news is designed to make you angry. The news is designed to put you and I at odds with each other. The, the news is designed to sell advertising, which is where they make their billions of dollars, advertising sales. And if they can shock you into watching, the higher their viewership, the better their advertising dollars, and the more money they make. Because they have advertising, advertising salesmen that work for CNN and Fox and ABC and CBS. The canvas potential clients that will advertise in their shows. And the more popular the show, the more expensive it is to advertise in the show, and the more money the show makes, the more money the network makes. And these shows, and I'm not just about shows, but the internet, you know, I'm looking right now at Yahoo's homepage. Now, I can control what I see. I just discovered this. I didn't realize I can control it. But on Yahoo, on their their homepage on Yahoo. It's all fear porn. It's all fear porn designed to get your blood pressure up, get you upset, get you anxious, get you clinging to your Bible, get you clinging to your your um, United States Constitution. Now, I don't know what you see on Yahoo. If there's a Yahoo.uk in the UK and it looks different than what I see here. But basically, the corporatization of the world has is so... Um, it's 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 uh, what's the word? It saturated the world to such a degree that we all probably see the same things now. And they've got the same fear, 
And if you can divorce yourself from Yahoo and from CNN and from Fox and ABC, CBS and all these networks and um, the BBC, I guess the BBC is the big one in England, in the UK. I don't know what you guys watch in Australia. I don't know what you watch in France. I'm sure you all have corporate run news organizations that try to scare you into anything. But I'll give you an example here. Yahoo on the, on the main page here, just in the, I'm not even on the news tab. I'm just on the main page. The, the headline right now is women's volleyball players happy with new dress code. Now you might be seeing people. Well, it's, yeah, they're just, just talking about a ladies basketball, um, softball, I'm um, sorry, volleyball team and the dress code, but <laughs> their first thing is this is the very lead story on the Yahoo page of two women that are wearing volleyball tops, which are very tight, athletic, bra type tops. And most men will look at them and go, oh, partially clad women. Now, so they're sexualizing it, number one. Number two, they're talking about clothes for women. That's sexualizing it. Why are we even concerned about female athletes and the clothing they're wearing while they're playing volleyball? This should not be on there. It should not be a news story, but they're objectifying women again in the media to get our attention so they can draw our attention and get better advertising dollars, which is over here on the right column, which is premium premium offerings. And there's a there's a flashing advertisement here for I guess it's all birds, sunshine ready hues, shoes, shop now. Underneath that is the weather. Tokyo games and who has how many gold and silver and bronze medals horoscope and then take your idea to new places Adobe Creative Cloud plans start at just $9.99 a month join now take your ideas to new places Adobe Creative Cloud now that might be where they can cater the advertising to the viewer because I'm a huge supporter of adobe and i use all their software to edit my videos and my audio and everything so but so we go on from the women's volleyball players happy with new dress code the next story underneath that is cdc even vaccinated people need masks and hot spots next story over is Restaurants famous for claims takes them. I'm sorry, not claims, clams. Restaurant famous for clams takes them off menu. Next story over. It's an outrage. Anger among the vaccinated. So, so out of the out of four stories, two of them are about the the, pan, the pandemic. Four story. Governor signs medical freedom immunization bill. Three out of five stories are about the vaccines and the pandemic. Number five, history is made during LeVar Burton debut on Jeopardy. Who cares? Ever since What's-His-Name died, um, not Pat Sajak, I can't think of the guy's name now. The, 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 The host forever of Jeopardy kicked the bucket. Everyone's like trying to figure it out. Who the host is going to be. Um, so that's an innocuous one. Then you scroll down. And then there's $11 a month. Gets seniors under 75 of age. $100,000 life insurance. They're talking about death there. That gets your blood pressure up. Just thinking about your, your mortality. Mortality, not immortality. Women exposes boyfriend's alleged cheating after noticing suspicious details in his photo. You're dealing with betrayal. So we're talking about pandemics and disease. We're talking about death, life insurance. We're talking about betrayal. Three people. Next story down. U.S. Miami Herald. Three people shot a kitten, then swept it into a Broward Street to be run over cops say a hollywood man shot an eight-month-old kitten with a rifle then another man used a broom to sweep the barely mobile kitty into the street apparently in hopes it would be run over i mean guess i'm not going to go through all these but this is crazy i mean this is complete and utter fear porn to play with your emotions to get you to click, to get you to dive in. It's like looking into a digital swimming pool and the devil's at the bottom of the pool going, come on in, 
jump, just jump in, just jump on in. <laughs> well, he talks like George Bush, the devil. George W. Bush, George W. <laughs> not gonna, not prudent at this juncture. Um, they they want you to jump in. They want you to click, so you get hypnotized and you get angry, and they can control you. I mean, every single story on here is about something upsetting. McDonald's, uh, this is from Lifestyle, in the know. McDonald's customer sparks massive debate with TikTok that claims you can't get free refills on fries. No way. Family of botched robbery victim says she won't make it, decides to donate her organs. I mean, this is all designed to make you unhappy, uncomfortable, miserable, scared. So you're clinging to the government. You're clinging to the corporations for guidance. What should we do? How should we feel? What should we think? I claim, as from my own personal experience, if you stop looking at this stuff, if you turn off your TV, you stop watching Fox and CNN and Yahoo and all these things, you'll start to find yourself feeling better. You'll feel yourself less paranoid. You'll feel yourself being less agitated, less upset, less concerned with the world. Because believe it or not, most of these things we're talking about all these things you're talking about, there's absolutely nothing any of us can do about any of it. I have no control what the women's volleyball team in the Olympics wears. I don't have any control what they do with the vaccine vaccines. I have no control over how much seniors get charged for life insurance. I have no control over, nor do I need to know that some man shot a helpless kitten and pushed him in the street with a broom. We don't, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for our lives. Now let's go over to Fox here. Now Fox, you know, you put in fox.com and it automatically defaults to the news station. Like if I try to assume, let me get rid of the news forward slash news, fox.com. No, that's my fault. That's my fault. I, I went to news. If you go to fox.com, it goes to Lego Masters. It goes to their home, which is a conglomeration of news and TV shows. But if you go over the news headlines, you know, it has a, a glitzy promotion here for a show called The Five, which looks like five painted up morons to probably talk about things you should be afraid of. Special report up, upcoming. Special report. Fox News Prime. They don't really have any stories here on their on their main page. But it's very the way it's the way it's presented is very eye catching, mesmerizing, lots of blues. Now, the color blue is used in psychology and is used psychologically with people to make you feel that it's a prestigious organization, that it's calm. The color blue can bring you down. It can make you feel sad. But the color blue also oh, um, indicates a feeling of prestige, stability. So they want you to think they're prestigious and stable, but it's very calm. And they want you to be calm. Fox has you taken care of. Now, if you go over to CNN, like Fox's news is predominantly blue and black, black and blue, black and blue, because they're beating you up with news you don't need to know. Um, we, back on Fox, you scroll down, and they don't really have much on here that's very um, inflammatory. But if you go to CNN, it's white. White and black with some red. Their logo is very tiny on Fox. Top of the page. It's it's very obvious this is Fox. The five. The and Fox is all over it. Their logo is all over the page. Fox, 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 Fox Business. Live now, Fox. Special report. Um so they're really pushing their brand. But on CNN it's white and black and the, at the top, the top banner is a jewelry store, is a jewelry business commercial. Brilliant Earth, Takori, unique engagement rings, Brilliant Earth. Now, why would they put, you gotta ask yourself this question. I mean, ask you ask who, what, when, where, why, how, those kind of questions. Why would they put a, on a CNN news station, why would the top banner be a jewelry store? Why? Because they want you to think that they're prestigious. Fox does it with colors and words and personalities. CNN does it with, they, they hook you with, oh, look at the shiny diamond ring. It's the first thing you see when you open up this page. Then as you look down, 
Biden to announce vaccination requirements for federal employees. Fear, more fear, vaccination. Here's what the offers testifying. Here's what the officers testifying want the January 6th committee to investigate. What's this whole hearing about the um, takeover of the Capitol on January 6th? More fear things. Another story here about um, the the gymnast, the American gymnast Biles. She says, we're people at the end of the day as mental health moves to the top of the Olympics agenda. So they're talking about, they want you to be concerned about these Olympians because they're under so much mental and emotional and physical stress during the Olympics that they want you to know that they're human. And they have times when they break down and they cry. I personally do not care one one iota about any of these Olympians or American basketball players or football players or baseball players or any of them. I don't care if they're, you know, doing water jousting or whatever people do in the Olympics. I, I used to be an athlete and uh, athletes are the biggest horses asses you'll ever meet. The biggest self-centered, most narcissistic group of people you'll ever want to run into. They think about one thing, themselves and sports. Two things, themselves and sports. So I don't care if Biles is about to have a mental breakdown because she didn't win the gold in this year's Olympics or she fell on the beam and broke her leg or something. I don't. I really don't care. Um, next story down to adventures. Adventurers plan to walk on water to New York in a floating bubble. Ends in a Florida beach. More tragedy. Ends in a beach. Didn't make it. They didn't make it to New York. Oh, no, they didn't make it to New York. The pandemic and the economy. Oh, more, more fear. Delta variant travel restrictions. Tourists wonder where they can go and whether they should. So this is more fear. And uh, this whole page, as you go down, it's just more and more fear. And um, the baby defends homophobic com- comments amid backlash. Higher prices could be here to stay. And if the Fed doesn't act soon, oh, no, panic. Oh, panic. we got to do something. We've got to contact the Fed to tell them to do something. Do something. Our prices are going to continue to rise. Inflation. Oh, inflation. It's all about inflation. It's about pandemics. It's about the athletes falling apart. And uh, now, now there's a there's a. A pan- not a pandemic, but a, um, what do you call when insects invade? It's not a pandemic, but an infesticide, an incesticide, I'm not incesticide. <laughs> but we've got cicadas here in this country again. Like three years ago, cicadas just swarmed uh, Ohio. They were all over. They were crawling all over our house, and our dogs were eating them out of the air. Well, they're back again for some reason. Even though they're only supposed to show up once every 17 years, well, they're back after three years. And, and this headline says... Welcome the smarter annual cicada to the U.S. Okay, I'm not even going to read this story, but apparently these cicadas have adapted and now they've got intelligence and they're smarter. So they probably know how to avoid certain traps or they've become immune to certain pesticides. Who knows? Oh, oh, the cicadas are coming. Wildfires scorn Spain. Oh, scorn, not scorn. Wildfires scorch Spain and cause disaster without precedence in Sardinia. Can you go over to one of these personalities from the Fox show, the Dan Bongino show? And um, I'm trying to, to illustrate here that these people are what are these people in these shows are what are called adjutants or agitators. Dan Bongino, who works for Fox, is an agitator. He's a former Secret Service guy, former New York City cop. I don't know how he went from that to being a a show on TV, but he has an agenda. It's a right-wing agenda. And I agree with some of the things he says, but he doesn't ever give a solution. Now, any of these guys, it doesn't matter whether it's Don Lemon or um, Dan Bongino or Geraldo Rivera, they've all got an agenda, but they never give you a solution. Okay, so on his page... The first thing you see is Nancy Pelosi and these uh, Chuck Schumer and all these other guys dressed in African garb. And of the four people on the screen, only two people are, 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 are two people are black and two people are Caucasian. Well, Nancy Pelosi is the furthest thing from African American you'll ever meet. Yet she's wearing 
like African tribal garb from Africa, looking very dominant with her hands and her fists on her hips and stuff like that, looking very menacing. And the headline reads, Episode 1571. Now, this is Dan Bongino's homepage. The de- Definitive Guide to Liberal Propaganda. This may be one of the finest articles about radical leftist propaganda that I've ever read. In this episode, I discuss the article and its conclusions about far left propaganda. Now, you know, unless you're a, you know, a political science major or you're really well schooled in propaganda or Marxism or fascism, fascism or communism or capitalism, I, you know, what good is it going to do any of us to know what propaganda is? And, and to study it. Now, there is a reason. I've been trying to show you propaganda because you're controlled by propaganda. But for him to go in, he doesn't tell you what to do about it. He goes on and on and on. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, one headline reads, officials to replace garbage cans for up to $20,000 a pop. Oh, I'm mad. They're spending all that money on garbage cans. They're trying to get you angry. CDC goes all in on mask madness, tells the vaccinated to mask up. Oh, more fear because they're now people, even though they're vaccinated, are allegedly getting the virus. And there's a variant. There's a Delta variant, and you're all going to die from it. Project Veritas leaks unreleased CNN AOC puff piece. See, and when I say Bongino was an agitator, he, he presents things to you that get you upset, get your blood pressure up, get you ready to call or write to your congressman or your whoever, get you to go down to city council and, and raise the roof. But he doesn't tell you what the solution is. What are the solutions? And they won't give you the solutions. Number one, because they don't want to be responsible for inciting anything, Right. They don't want to be responsible to say, hey, Dan Bongino said to go riot somewhere. They don't want that. Bongino and all of them don't want that hanging over their head. They don't want the liability behind it, and the networks won't permit it. But they're just trying to get you agitated. They're trying to get you upset. Everything I'm talking about here, all these things, the news is designed to get you upset. And I maintain that if you divorce yourself... From each and every one of these media outlets, you will find yourself becoming healthier, happier. This is how you can make yourself happy, by divorcing yourself from these news media outlets today. Don't wait. Don't think about it. You, I can tell you this. I, I haven't watched any of this stuff. And last night, last night, my wife was watching the Olympics. And I left, she went to bed, I went to the bathroom and came out and the Olympics were over or something. And I think it was on NBC and they cut to our local NBC affiliate, Channel 3 here in Cleveland. And it was the local news media that I hadn't seen in like months. We'd stopped watching them months ago. And there is the local weather lady and you know the local news personalities talking about the weather. And how it's nothing but sunshine from here on out this week. Like, okay, this lady probably makes 200 grand a year to stand up in front of a camera and tell me that it's going to be sunny tomorrow. And don't get me started on the weather people in Arizona. Well, there is no weather in Arizona. There, I'm not being facetious. There really is no weather in Arizona. Once in a while, a monsoon blows in, like in July, preceded by a dust storm and some flooding and then it all goes away in 15 minutes it's gone within a half an hour the whole city's dry again but they pay a man or woman to stand in front of a camera and tell us the weather why because they're trying to manipulate you they want you to think a certain way they want you to be conditioned to, to turn on the tv and listen to the weather I think you have to know about the weather you don't need to know about the weather you don't need to know about it unless you are going canoeing on, on the Colorado River and you're wondering if there's about to be a flood or something. You, you need to know about it. I guess you're going on a cruise and you're going to the Caribbean. And if there's a big storm brewing uh, off the coast of something down there. But otherwise, most of us really don't need to know the weather, especially when I worked in an office. When I worked in the corporate world, I get up in the morning. I put on my khakis and my little polo shirt and my black or brown belt or my black or brown matching shoes and my khaki, you know, docker pants. And I'd eat my breakfast. I'd shower, eat my breakfast, get dressed, jump in a car inside of a garage, protected from the elements, drive two miles down the street, 
but it took me half an hour to go two miles in the city. I used to live in the southwest side of Cleveland, protected by the elements of my car, rain, sun, snow, shine, whatever. Get out of my car, walk 50 feet from my car to the front door, maybe get a little wet, and then sit in a weather-protected office on the third floor of a building that was protected from the elements. That was five days a week of my life, and I never once was affected by the weather, unless a lightning bolt knocked out the power, and then we were all like, cool, we don't have to work now. Ball games? Who cares? I'm so not into um, professional sports anymore. It's sad. It's it's not sad. It's it's amazing. I used to be so fanatical about baseball and football, and I'm fanatical a little bit, borderline fanatical about the Cleveland Browns, but the Cavs and the Indians here in Cleveland, they're so awful, they're deplorable, and the people that own them are deplorable. The people that own the Cleveland Indians are such cheapskates. It's 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 painful. And I know that they're cheapskates because Paul Dolan Jr., his father, they're both, his father was an attorney in the town I grew up in. And when I was in college, I worked at a restaurant called Berkeley's on the Square. And Mr. Dolan Sr. would come swooping into the restaurant and take over our extra room with his entourage and, and force the two girls, they would take two women to wait on the whole team. And I'd be forced to, to take the front room where all the regular people were eating their soup and sandwiches. And these two women would get worked to death. They'd even call an extra woman in to wait on them. And they were cheap fuckers back then. They hardly tipped these girls at all. And they acted like queens and kings in there. Like, oh, get me this, get me that, get me this, get me some clam chowder. The Dolans are the cheapest SOBs that have ever May, I don't know if ever, but in Cleveland, they, they don't know what they're doing. And I hate sports. I just can't stand sports anymore. And these, these, this, this is what I think of sports. I'm going to go off on a tangent here because I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Um, something I wrote on Facebook. And this is just something I, I thought of because I was watching. Some video of her uh, Scherzer, Matt Scherzer. I think he's a, a pitcher. He's, he's a pitcher in the Major League Baseball. I was watching some film of him on um, YouTube. Scherzer. He's been traded a lot in his in his career because he's a bit of a hothead. Um, yeah, Max Max Scherzer. He's a nut nutcase. So I'm watching this guy. He's striking people out, and in his highlight reel, I'm watching. And the highlight of the reel was, you know, this guy's a nutcase. It was something like that. Like how, how fucking crazy he gets when he doesn't get his way. Or So he strikes this guy out, and he's like puffing out his chest. He's like punching his mitt. He's like, yeah, 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 I got him out. And, you know, he's freaking out, and he's yelling at the other team, and he's being a dickhead. Because that's what jocks are. Jocks are all just like Max, Max Serger, Scherzer, whatever his name is. He plays a kid's game, and he acts like he's something. Isn't that sad? These predominantly men, they play these games, football, baseball, basketball, water polo, whatever it is, like they're like they're something, like that really means something in the world. There's there's billions of people in the world, homeless, sick, starving, dying, being raped, tortured in prisons. And Max Scherzer thinks he's something special because he can throw a fastball 100 miles an hour strike out some dude. But on Facebook, I said, isn't it odd to watch predominantly men puff out their chests and celebrate with pride and machismo when they overthrow a country, beat an opponent in some senseless sport, or when they purchase a new muscle car. Many of these same men have no empathy, compassion, passion, or understanding of the poor, disadvantaged, or the oppressed. We often place these men on pedestals praising their conquests. And then I ask, what would the world be like if we hailed those who brought true peace among people without war instead of propping up stooges who insist that bombs and bloodshed were the only way to accomplish anything. Society always wonders why we are at war. We ask, why is there poverty? Why are there starving people? Yet at the same time praising and worshiping the very people that brought them to their knees. The madness will continue only until everyone realizes the madness of our times and when we decide to put it all to an end peacefully. 
and I mean that. Men have run the world, as, you know, all the history books. There's been a few female rulers. Some of them weren't exactly mentally stable. But predominantly men, they, they, they get off on war. They get off on bloodshed. Men are sadistic fucks. Men get off on shooting kittens and pushing them in the streets. You don't hear stories like of women doing that. I'm not saying that women don't do stuff like that. But it's predominantly men that have these weird psychoses and these weird issues where they like to torture, torment, bomb, shoot, break up, explode, tear apart, uh, 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 dominate, conquer. And it's it's the most bizarre thing that, that our society holds these people up in such high esteem. When, when in fact, they're, they're the cause for millions, hundreds of millions of people to die since like 1911. Like one to 200 million people have died in all the wars combined worldwide in all nations. Hundreds of millions of people have died at the hands of men who have decided for political reasons to take this piece of land or to take this house or to shoot this person or to do this or do that. Oh, because they want power. It's all about power. You know, I, I don't. And then and then we, we hold them up. We hold them up. We put them on pedestals going, oh, great God. Thank you for taking over Germany. Thank you for invading Belgium. Oh, great God. Thank you for saving the Germans and the British. And uh, thank you for uh, conquering the Japanese. Oh, great Swami. Thank you. It's, it's, it's crap. You know, we still we still sit back and we let these men do it again and again and again and again over and over and over and we ask why we're not happy why aren't we happy daddy why aren't i happy well let me beat it into your head there buddy get my belt i'll show you see men all think you got to take the belt to somebody what if we all just started to be kind to each other well, you know, i think the the greatest saying of, of our of the 20th century was Rodney King he said man why can't we all just get along man I mean it's that simple is it really worth getting that upset about because somebody like you know cut in front of you in traffic you know, I used to be like that in Phoenix I was a raving lunatic in traffic complete raving lunatic and now somebody's car is getting broken into in my yard well, they, they turned off. And, uh, I just don't get it. I really don't. I don't get how we can sit here and just hold these men in such high esteem, whether it's Colonel Patton or it's Hitler or it's, you know, Osama bin Laden. There's people out there that probably worship Osama bin Laden. And we only know one side of that story. I mean, I, I, there's two sides to every pancake. Who knows who that man really was or if he even really existed. I'd never heard of him prior to 9-11. But to wrap this up, since my dogs are going crazy because somebody's car alarm is going off outside. If you want to be happy, if you want to find true happiness in your life, you've got to start re eliminating the things from your life that make you unhappy. You may not know it. But Yahoo, Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS, all of them are making you extremely unhappy because they want you unhappy. And your unhappiness and your misery keeps you coming back for more. They've trained you like little puppy dogs to keep coming back for more. They've got you up in your haunches saying, please, please let me have more bloodshed. Please, more torment. It makes, makes me so happy. They've got you miserable and you don't even know it. I guarantee you, if you stop watching all of these, you will begin to start feeling better. You'll be healthier. You'll sleep better. You'll eat better. You'll feel better about yourself and your spouse and your significant other and your kids. And the minute you stop uncluttering your mind, you start uncluttering your mind with all the news headlines that they want you to be afraid of whether it's vaccine or who won the World Series or who didn't win the World Series or who shot up somebody outside of Houston Astro Stadium, whatever it happens to be. So with that, I'll bid you adieu. Learn to be happy. Leading out of the rabbit hole, one grain of truth at a time. This is P.T. Pop on a mind revolution. Tune out, man. Tune out. Unplug your internet. 
stop watching your TV. All it's doing is filling your mind with garbage and rotting your brain. Take care. Bye. So you've been trying to go to your phone when love is something to you. You have been listening to PC Pop, a mind revolution. Please swallow and be like a dog in a cage, howling to be free. Save by the bell in the middle of the night Just in the next